I've been getting some questions on how we've painted the floor in our guest bedroom. Um, we painted the subfloor as a temporary solution until putting hardwood in here is in our budget. Um, it, in the meantime, it helps protect it, makes it easy to clean, um, prevents splinters, and looks more attractive. And I've just put together a few tips um, of the process that I use and found to be durable. We painted the subfloor in our bathroom two years ago and uh, it really helps protect the floor in the meantime as a temporary solution. So hopefully these tips will help you if this is the project you plan to take on in your home. Materials that we need to start painting our floor. Paint rollers, paint brush, painter's tape, primer. I had my primer tinted so that it's a lot easier. And flat finish. I bought the gallon because it's actually cheaper than two quarts. And flat finish. measuring for the area where the area rug is going to be in the center of the floor. At the edge of the wall, I place my yard stick and I'm marking off at three foot, just making a small mark. And I keep doing this around the room. Then I line up the marks. There's the edge of my line. There's a mark there. And a mark down there. Just using my hair stick as the straight edge. I just continue around the room in this way. The rug's taped off, and I'm ready to start painting my border. I actually put the tape on the inside of my line. Um, I'll be right back with the next update. Painting the floor is started and I am going around the base of the wall with a paintbrush before I roll up to the tape. This is a porch and floor paint and I'm also painting with the grain of the of plywood. Right, the floor is cut in near the, the wall, where the floor meets the wall, and now I'm rolling up to the tape line. So I'll keep working and finish. finish that we just up. applied the second coat of the border, the dark brown, and it's time to pull off the tape that marks the area rug, or the area rug is going to be while the paint's still wet. Just lift up an end. And you're actually going to pull it away from the paint. See how it's pulling a, oops, see how it's pulling away from the paint there. And you want to do it while it's still wet, otherwise you'll end up pulling off some of the paint. It's a really crisp, straight line. around the rest of the room. I actually put this tape, since it's sticky and wet, onto newspaper. It's just easier to gather it up and put it in the, in the garbage that way. Next I'm painting the inside where the area rug is going to be, the base color. You can wait till the brown, the border, closest to the wall dries and then tape to um, make sure you have easy lines. I like to use a party paintbrush. Um, this brush always makes a huge difference. You can definitely make 
straight lines with a steady hand without taping. Just like that. The first coat's been rolled on for the um, painted area rug. It's looking better already. I'm going to let that dry a little bit for a couple hours and then I'm going to go ahead and put a second coat on and then let it dry overnight. But looking good. Before you paint, actually take a credit card and press down on the edges of the tape. You actually don't want to forget to do this. This will keep the paint from seeping underneath and it'll create a nice crisp line. Alright, so the border's all taped off. I just played with the tape and um, there was no plan to this. It's just how it worked out. That's the border um, that I'm going to use. And this is the stencil I'm going to use. I received these from CuttingEdgeStencils.com and it is the Ecot border or, I'm sorry, you caught stencil. And it comes in two pieces. This um, large plastic design right here, large, and then a top design. And I'm going to use the top in between these two tape lines and the bigger stencil in the center. And my next step is to find the middle of that big section of the area rug that I'm creating. Once I find that, then I will show you what I'm doing next. I'm using a tape measure from inside corner, diagonally inside corner, find the halfway mark um, and, and make a pencil mark and do it from this corner to the other diagonal corner and um, halfway in between make a mark too. That will be the center of the floor and that's where we're going to start with the large stencil and work our way out from there. I also forgot to mention, if you can see, we did not fill the cracks and nail um, the nail holes or sand my floor. This is a temporary solution for us. So probably at the most a year, year and a half, sometimes temporary. It has a way of being a little bit longer, but if you're wanting something a little more permanent, you want to fill in those with um, either wood filler or I would probably suggest paintable caulking so that it was a little bit flexible and then a light sand all over your whole floor for, for probably better results but this doesn't bother us and um, I'm gonna go ahead and start stenciling. Okay ready to stencil. I'm gonna try this one-handed here. Use a foam roller I get it all clean all over it. Then you're gonna need a roll of paper towels too. And roll paint on the paper towels. Oops, I need two hands. Hold on. You want to get the paint on the roller, all over the roller, but you don't want it to be like dripping on there. You want it to look almost dry. like that. The stencil's in place. You can use a stencil adhesive if you want. I don't. But um, I'm going to set the camera down again and start to roll to show you where my, uh, the center of my floor, you'll see the X right there, is in the center of the stencil. I'll go ahead and uh, start stenciling. You just start rolling this over until you get all of the stencil area covered. So actually I lifted up this, I'm moving on, and I lifted up the stencil. See how that guy on the left is overlapping the, the bottom of that previous stencil, and the one on the right is also overlapping. Keeps everything lined up nice and straight. Okay, I'm stenciling again um, with my cutting edge stencil, but I wanted to show you 
I know it's a little bit dark. I'm working here late. But I wanted to show you how fast I move along with this stencil because it's so easy. Don't mind my paintbrush. Sometimes it does um, seep through a little bit and mess up the design just a tad. But since I um, this little quite an area rug, a little bit of fuzziness is okay. Right, last night I went through with the stencil and some colored um, paint. I used leftover paint and some acrylic craft paint to just add some color to the design. And next we're going to up, sweep up and make sure there's no more dust or, or anything on the floor. Then apply a couple of coats of polycrylic. Polycrylic doesn't yellow, um, polyurethane will. And um, polycrylic, we're going to add a couple of coats of that using a brush and a roller, letting it dry between each between each coat. But it's looking good. Um, the polycrylic has been applied, so the floor's been sealed and let to dry, and the furniture has been moved in. So this is the final results of our guest room makeover with the painted floor. Here's where it leads into our guest bathroom with a painted floor in here. So, looks great. A really budget friendly, temporary solution to finishing up this room. And it does look like a real rug. I'll walk around here so you can see all of it. how I paint a floor.